All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this MSI PS42-8RB-0590US-SS78551U16GXXDX10P. So that's a very long model number. Um, they also give this model number, MS-14B1. So I'm not sure what the actual model number is on here. Um, oh, I guess it's here. So it's a PS428RB. So that's the actual model number there. Okay, so Prestige Series. <clears throat> okay, so I guess this is an MSI Prestige Series laptop. All right, so first thing we're going to do is get a PH1 or JIS1 screwdriver and remove all the screws from the bottom. All right, so we're going to take that and just undo all these screws. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I take the screw out, put them flat side down like that in the pattern I remove them. And so you see there's four here, four here, and then four here. So I'll basically just put them on my desk in that pattern for three rows of four. All right, you can do it however helps you, um, but that's how I do it. Uh, on the bottom of the laptop, there is also a BIOS or CMOS reset, battery reset button here. If you use a little needle or a pin or a bent out um, paper clip, you can push and hold that for about 15 seconds to reset your uh, BIOS. <clears throat> it's like a quick battery disconnect. Sometimes that can help resolve some uh, issues where the computer's not starting up right. All right. <clears throat> if this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can also learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, these are customer computers, so I don't own these. Uh, so if you have questions and need me to show other things, just keep that in mind. I'm not going to be able to show it because I won't have the computer by the time you see this video. All right, so let's go ahead and continue removing all the screws. All right, so this one the customer told me was running hot, so they wanted it, the fans and the thermal paste to be redone. So we're gonna open it up, clean out the fans, and redo the thermal paste. Okay, so that now that we got all the screws out, <clears throat> let's see if we can use a suction cup to get this bottom cover off. Okay. Um, it popped up pretty easily. I'm just sliding my fingernail in the edge here. All right, let's see. Okay, only the side kind of popped up. So the edges seem to be quite difficult, but the sides don't seem to have clips. So that means all the clips are likely on the, <coughs> on the front and back. Here you can see this popped up. Okay, let's see if it's like <clears throat> other MSI models where we have to pop this stuff out. So again, I'm just going to use my fingernails. You can use the plastic pry tools or whatever you want. All right, so I'm just undoing the clips here with my fingernails here, as you can see. Just like this, going along and popping those clips. And there you can see we got all those clips away. Let's go ahead and continue working our way over. So let's see, are there clips on this side? Are there hidden screws under here? Okay, so this is popped up slightly, so we're going to keep working our way over, around. Okay, so something is still somewhat holding it down. It's not completely separating here, as you can see. It might be <clears throat> it's getting caught on the frame, so we might have to actually pop out the front before we can pull the whole thing out. Okay, so we're going to continue going down the side here can actually feel like something holding okay there we go all right so I guess that works you're gonna have to kind of pull this out as you kind of lift this up okay so we're pulling out this back side while we lift that up and there we go so now we can go ahead and pop this let's see the front is still holding down pretty strong so looks like we're gonna have to undo some clips there as well let's see if we can kind of lift this slightly hmm Okay, so these clips tend to be, or seem to be holding really strong. So, I don't know, we can't just, I don't want to just like rip it out and then end up breaking something. Okay, most likely what's happening is the base of this <coughs> part is getting caught underneath. 
So I'm going to need my thin pry tool to kind of lift it, and then that should allow me to pull it forward towards myself to unclip it. All right, so hold on. I'll go get my tool, and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So let's see if we can do this. So we're going to get this tool under here. Okay, to lift it up slightly and see if we can push the clip over. Okay, there we go. So here you can see, we have to slide a tool under there to pop those clips. Those clips are very strong. All right, we're just gonna keep working our way over. There we go. And now we can lift this up. Here you can see these little clips here, okay? All right, those little clips, these clips are what's holding it. Hopefully you can see that, there you go. So those clips were what, what was holding it in place, but there we go, we got this open. The fans don't look too dusty. Um, so yeah, most likely we're going to have to just pop it out and then redo the thermal paste. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna set the cover aside. We're going to remove the battery. So again, using the PH1 or JS1 screwdriver, let's go ahead and remove the screws holding the battery in place. Let's zoom in a bit so you can Focus more on the battery itself. Oops, too much. All right, so we're gonna get that screw out. <clears throat> Again, keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. And if you mix them up, you can damage your computer. All right, so we got those two. And then it looks like two more on this side. So we might actually have to remove the wireless card as well. Okay, or at least the antennas. Um, I don't, I'm actually not going to remove the, um, antennas, but let me see. Actually, yeah, we'll just do it. Okay, let's remove the wireless card here. So there's one screw. All right. And then you want to take the antenna wires out. So let's zoom in here. Just because they're kind of blocking the battery. So the way you get these out, so this red part is going to the um, white arrow, and then the black one is just the black one. All right, so let's go ahead and pop these out. So what I do is I go from the tail, and then I can just pull it straight up, just like that. Same thing with the other one. Just pull it straight up, and there we go. All right, you could actually take the screw out of this after you remove the antenna so it doesn't move around. Anyways, lift this up slightly. Okay, as you can see, I'm lifting the wireless card, and then I'm using this raised part to help pull it out. And there we go. Got the wireless card out. We'll set that aside. Okay, now we're going to remove the battery. So let's zoom out so you can see that better. Oops. Okay, so the battery is connected right here. We're going to lift up from the bottom. I'm going to slowly move it away so that we have more room to work on it. And then we can't really grab here. So what we're gonna have to do is just grab the connector as close as we can. Let's zoom in. Sorry, people are messaging me. It's making it hard to zoom in and out. All right, so grab the cable and then you kind of just wiggle this and pull it out. All right, so if it's stuck, just keep wiggling it. Eventually it will pop out. Um, battery model number, if you need it, is right here, BTY. Dash M48. I know somebody's going to complain there's gunk under my fingernails. I'm working on computers, whatever. All right. If you want, I can clean them out. But <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead and zoom out again. All right. Now we're going to peel up this. So there's just some tape on it. All right. We're going to peel this up. You want to try and be careful not to bend these cables so you want to try and peel it up um, and keep the cables flat if you want you can use like a small plastic tool something like this and you can use that to help peel it up okay so just peel it out all right just like that same thing with the other side again you can use a small plastic tool or something to help you peel up the adhesive just to get underneath one side and then peel that up and then peel that out. All right, so we're gonna set the wireless antennas aside now or move them to the back. <clears throat> All right, one thing to do after you disconnect the battery, you wanna open up the computer and then press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds. This will drain any residual power from the board and will make it a lot safer to work on. 
Um, if you don't do this, especially if you're going to mess with the LCD or LVDS connector, there's a very good chance you're going to fry the backlight circuit. Um, so it's very important. Just press and hold the button for about 15 seconds. All right. All right. So now let's go ahead and start disconnecting things. Here you can see the trackpad has two cables. I'm not sure why it needs two. Um, then you got the keyboard connector. Let me actually zoom in here to make it easier for you guys to see. And I'll actually remove them at the same time. So we got the speaker cable here first. You can see the wire goes to either side for both speakers. All right, I just use my fingernails usually here, um, but because the connector's underneath, it's a little tough. So I might have to use some small needle nose pliers or something, but usually I grab the wings here and then I kind of just wiggle it. Okay, just like this. Okay, I can do it a little one by one. And you just wiggle it and eventually the connector will come out. Oh, sorry, it went out of view, but basically you just wiggle it and eventually it will pop out. All right, the speakers aren't held in with any screws. They're just held in with these little rubber things it looks like. So if you wanted, you can actually just, yeah, you can just lift these out, but I'm gonna leave them in place. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna now disconnect the keyboard connector. So we're gonna flip this latch up. Right, once you flip that latch up, you can pull this connector out. There's not much slack here. You wanna be careful with this cable. Um, let me see. If you can grab the blue part, you, you wanna do that. But on this case, the blue part is too short. So it's hard to do that. What I'm gonna do to make this a little easier is I'm actually, let's see if I'm, I can do it this way. I'm gonna use a piece of tape here, okay? So I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut a piece of tape about the size of that connector. Or a little bit smaller, all right. So you use that tape, just grab a hold of that blue tab with the tape, and then you can use that to help pull it out just like that. Um, just know that when you peel this off, you wanna make sure not to rip the blue tab off of this connector. Otherwise, when you go to plug it in, it's not gonna work. Okay, so we got the same thing here. This is the keyboard backlight connector. Flip that latch up. Then you can go ahead and pull that connector out. And then same thing with the two trackpad connectors. Flip those two latches up. Okay, and then try and grab those and pull those out just like that. All right, there we go. Let's see what else we got. Okay, so we got two more connectors on top. So we got the LCD LVDS connector here. Same thing, the latch is on the other side, flip that up. There is an adhesive here, I believe, so let me actually zoom out a little bit. Okay, so you wanna be careful peeling this up. Okay, so here you can see we can pull up from here and it's okay, but on the back here, there's an adhesive holding it down. So again, you wanna be careful not to um, crease this cable, so you don't wanna just fold it backwards. You wanna try and pull it towards yourself while you're lifting it up to try and keep it as flat as possible. All right, just like this. Okay, just like that. So here we go. We got the cable up and out of the way. And now we got the last cable here. Um, I don't see a label for this or anything, but it goes into the screen. Most of the time this is like a camera cable or microphone or sometimes a touch screen. Um, so anyways, let's flip this latch up and then also remove this cable. Same as the other one, okay. You can peel here, but then there's adhesive holding it down. Looks like there's some exposed wire here as well. But um, again, you don't want to fold the cable back if you can help it. Just pull it towards yourself as you lift it. I'm putting my hand down here so it doesn't just yank the cable up if it gets to the end of the adhesive. All right, there we go. And then we're going to go to this side and do the same thing. Peel that up. Okay, move that out of the way, move that out of the way. All right, so now we're going to remove the motherboard screws and then we're gonna lift the motherboard out. So let's see here. Okay, we're gonna take the PH1 or JS1 screwdriver and then we're gonna remove these screws. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like um, on the motherboard, they only put screws in the middle. There's no markings here to show what screws you removed. So usually when it's like that, I like to take a marker and then I just mark where the screws were so that it's easier to remember. Okay, just like that, put a little mark on them. That way you know where the screws came from and then you don't put them in the wrong spot. Because if you put the screws in the wrong spot, 
then <clears throat> when you go to put the cover back or anything, you're going to be missing some and then you won't be able to put them back. If you're wondering, there's the reset button that you press through the hole. It's basically just a dome, metal dome like that. When you push it, it just clicks it open like that and makes contact. Anyways, let's go ahead and remove these screws. Okay. Again, keep all the screws in order. They are different size, shape, and lengths. You don't want to mix them up or you can damage your computer. All right, so there we go. Again, we're just removing all of these and marked all of them so that we can tell where to put them back. Right. I always like to keep all the screws in order by putting them in the pattern I remove them. That way, if for some reason, <clears throat> if for some reason the screws are slightly different, it won't have any issues because we'll always have all the same screws back where we got them from. All right, so last screw there if it was off camera. Okay, so I think that's all the screws we need to remove to pop this out. Okay, so let's see here. Yep. So this one lifts out pretty easily, it seems. It doesn't seem like anything is stuck. Let me see if, okay, the headphone jack is um, stuck in this spot. So we have to lift it at an angle up from this side. Okay. All right. So you want to carefully lift from the left side or the side with the SSD. As you can see, the SSD is underneath. Okay. The fans kind of stick down a little bit. You want to make sure all these cables end up going underneath the motherboard as you lift it. And of course, move this cable out of the way. We're going to slowly lift this just in case anything is still attached and then slowly pull it out. And here we can see the other side of the motherboard. There's a stick of RAM here and an M.2 um, NVMe SSD, uh, 512 gig. So it looks like they actually upgraded this um, in the past and the heat sink it's two separate pieces so hmm okay I'm guessing this is the CPU and this is the GPU but that's a very small GPU um, card anyways I'm gonna clean the dust off of here and I'll be back um, I'm not sure what this giant button is here I don't see anything that is that the power button oh Okay, that's the this is the power button. So that's kind of annoying because if you have to replace the power button, you're gonna have to solder around these. There's these four posts here um, to replace that. But yeah, all right. So yeah, I'm gonna clean the dust off of this real quick, and I'll be back. Basically, I'm gonna use a toothbrush, loosen up the dust, and then use a electric air blower to blow all the loose dust out. Okay. Um, Let's see, if you're able to get this far, you probably already know how to remove the M.2 SSD. Basically remove the one screw, it pops up slightly like the wireless card, and then you can pull it back. Um, the fans, if you want, you can actually take out the three, these are PH0 or JIS0 screws. You can take those out and then you can actually separate the fan from this, uh, this heat sink assembly. Um, then you got the BIOS, CMOS, or RTC battery, whatever you want to call it. There's so many names for it. Just grab the wing, same thing, like the speaker thing, and wiggle it and pull it out. Um, the SSD does have a thermal pad here uh, underneath, so that holds it down into place. Um, and then, yep, same thing, the other fan here, these connectors um, remove just like the speaker as well. And, yeah, so next thing we're going to do... We're going to pop off these stickers after I clean it up and then redo the thermal paste. So I'll do that now, cleaning the dust, and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So we cleaned out the dust from up here. All right, there's still a little dust down here, but it's not really in the motherboard, so it shouldn't affect anything, but let's go ahead and clean it up. So I don't use the electric blower on these parts because of all these cables. Um, they're a little fragile and you don't want these flying all over the place when you blow the dust out. All right. <clears throat> Anyways, we're going to set this aside. Okay. And now let's go ahead and work on the motherboard here. Okay. If you're wondering, the RAM, we'll pop these two tabs to the side here. Okay. They put a little foam pad here to make it harder to pop the RAM out. But there we go. Pop those two out. Then it comes up at an angle. I can take this out and I'm pretty sure this is aftermarket RAM, but here you can see DDR4 3000. Um, 
So you can use any DDR4 RAM. This is a Dash 3000, so I guess they probably upgraded the speed too, because I think most people don't have this speed of RAM. Anyways, put it back in at the angle like that, and then go ahead and push it down. And yes, there's only one stick of RAM that you can replace on here. So this is 16 gigs, um, and there's likely some RAM somewhere soldered on the motherboard, but I don't see it. So, all right. So let's go ahead now and snap this back down into place. I'm going to try and hold this out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. Wow, this takes a lot of force to move this down. Maybe I should just take that rubber piece. Okay, no, it worked. Okay, so there we go. We got the RAM back into place. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the screws for the heat sinks and then we're going to uh, redo the thermal paste. So I'm going to use a needle or maybe the plastic tool to undo the little sticker there. I'm going to zoom in and we're going to just focus on one at a time, but it's basically going to be the same on both sides. All right, so let's go ahead and remove this plastic, this little sticker if we can. All right, I don't know if the sticker is going to want to come up. We might have to just break it. These are kind of like warranty seal stickers, kind of. All right. Okay, it does peel off. So there we go. Just peel that off. All right, they use like a fabric-y kind of tape. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do one side first. So these are PH0 or JAS0 screws. So we are going to have to switch to a smaller screwdriver. And then let's go ahead and undo the four screws. If there's, okay, it looks like it sits flat, but if your motherboard doesn't sit flat, you wanna keep pressure underneath, so that way when you press down to unscrew the screws, that you're not putting too much pressure on the motherboard itself. You don't wanna crack the motherboard, all right? Anyways, let's go ahead and undo these four screws. Again, keep them in order. Okay. Wow, these screws are pretty tight in there. Okay, this side seems like it's flexing the board a little, so I'm putting my hand underneath to keep the pressure firm against the back of the screw, and we're going to undo this screw. Dang, those screws are tight. Sorry, I had to adjust my angle of my hand to be able to get it out easier. All right, and the last screw here. There we go. All right, now that we got those four screws out, um, just to be safe, let's probably also um, disconnect the fan connector down here. So the fan connector is right there. Again, I just use my fingernails and I kind of just wiggle the connector and you just keep wiggling it, wiggling it, wiggling it, and eventually it pops out just like that. All right, oops. There we go. They put it underneath this uh, thermal capped on tape. So just get it out from under there. All right, now let's go ahead and remove the fan and heat sink assembly. Let's zoom out a bit so you can see better. All right, to remove that, if it's stuck, usually what I like to do is to twist the thing. You don't wanna just pull it straight up because it can rip it out of the board. So usually I would just kind of like twist it a bit. And there we go. And yeah, that's the GPU. The thermal paste doesn't look too bad. It still seems kind of liquidy. Um, anyways, we're gonna clean this off. So I'm gonna use this tool and just scrape it off. You can just use paper towel to clean it off right away. Um, but I like to clean off the giant blob first using um, this just so I can get it out quickly. All right, <clears throat> same thing with the other side. All right, we're just gonna scrape out the excess thermal paste here. The paste, again, it's liquidy, so it seems like it should be okay, but I don't know. The customer told me it's running hot, so we're just gonna scrape up the excess thermal paste. I guess there's some parts of the paste that are kind of solid, solidified, so. All right, so just get off all that paste. All right, then what we're gonna do, we're gonna get a clean piece of paper towel and we're just gonna try and wipe off the excess. 
All right, if you're wondering, I'm keeping myself grounded to my desk with my knee against the metal part. Okay. All right, so clean off all that paste. Good, we're gonna do the same thing with the heat sink. You wanna keep your hand underneath the heat sink because these thermal pipes are kind of fragile. You can bend them easily, so you don't wanna just put pressure on them with it laying on the desk. All right, so there we go. Looks pretty clean. Now we're going to get a new, another clean piece of paper towel, and we're gonna take some 91% isopropyl alcohol, just get a little bit on there. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and clean this off. It's a very small GPU die. All right, normally when I work on the GPUs, they're like ginormous now, but anyways, so we'll clean this off as well. Okay, you wanna try and get as much of the old paste and oxida oxidation off so that it's like a nice clean surface. All right, here you can see how dirty that is. Okay, and then we're just gonna dry it up. All right, I'm gonna use this to get the lint off. All right, now we're going to reapply the thermal paste and then we're going to put the heat sink back on. So again, this is a very small <clears throat> GPU die, so you don't really need much thermal paste on here. They always overdo it, as you saw with the thing here, there's a whole bunch of paste all sticking out. Okay, my camera's trying to understand what's going on. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna put a small circle sphere here, kind of. All right, so just get a small amount. That's already too much. <laughs> okay, I need to get my paste to go back in. It's not going back in the tube. Okay, so you don't need much, all right? so. I already put too much. Let me use a different tube because this one is kind of sticking out. I'm going to use another tool to kind of shape it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to use this and we're just going to shape this into a sphere on top. Normally I use the tube, but I couldn't get the rest of the paste to go back in. Okay, so we kind of just want it in the center. When you push it down, it's going to splat itself completely out and it will push all the air bubbles out. If you want to make sure you have 100% coverage, you can do the method where some people, they spread it all over the entire thing. Um, after you do that, just put a very small amount in the center and then that way it will also push out any residual air bubbles. But I've seen other videos and people just do it however and the, the temperatures aren't really affected too much. So you don't really have to worry too much. Just don't put a crazy amount to where it like flows all into this whole outer area of the chip. All right, so now we're just gonna put the heat sink back. So do they even number this? Okay, they do number these, but you can barely see. So first screw here, second screw here, third screw here, fourth screw there, all right? Anyways, just get that all lined back up. Okay, make sure all the screw holes line up. This tape was sticking to the side of the fan before, so we're going to make that stick to the side of the fan again. All right, again, get all the screw holes lined up. And just drop it down. All right. So now to put the screws back, again, you want to do it in that order. What, where did I get this thermal paste stuck to my finger? Okay, let me clean this, sorry. Somehow I got a big blob of the old thermal paste stuck to my finger. I don't know where that came from. All right, oh no, now it's stuck. Sorry for this excess stuff that you don't need to watch, but okay, throw that away. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is put the screw here. I like to just twist it twice like that, all right? Get the second one, same thing, one, two, all right? Third one, one, two. And if you notice, I twist it backwards until it clicks and then I twist it forward twice, right? So here you can hear, 
you hear that click that's how you know it's going in properly all right one two all right so once you got all of that in make sure all these screws for the fan are lined up and then we can go ahead and tighten these down all right one two three four five 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 all right once you do that it's slowly spreading out the thermal paste um, i'm going to get my hand underneath just so there's less pressure when i tighten these screws and we're going to just tighten them all the way down all right so sorry if i'm going out of view let me tilt it here you go all right so first screw all right second screw make sure i'm holding it down all right second screw all right, third screw over here. I'm holding it, there we go. There we go. And then the final screw down here. All right, so we got the GPU heat sink in. Let's go ahead and peel back up this yellow capped on tape stuff and then get the fan connector back in. There we go. Get the fan connector back lined up. Pinch the two pieces together. All right, and if you want, you can go ahead and tape that back down. It technically doesn't need to be taped down, so I don't know why they put that, but whatever, it is what it is. Um, oh, this is slightly out of alignment, but should be okay, because you can see through the holes on each side. All right, so now we're going to do the CPU side. Same thing, we're gonna take all the screws out Let's go ahead and remove this little plastic piece. Oh, let's put this plastic piece back so we don't forget. Technically, this isn't needed for anything. It's just there so they know that you if you took it out or not. All right. Stick that back on there. There we go. All right. Let's peel up this other one. Okay. Set that aside. All right, let's go ahead and remove these four screws as well. Okay. Again, keep all the screws in order. Okay. Second screw. Don't forget to disconnect the fan as well. I'm going to do that after I get all these screws out. Okay. one there we go all right it could be the cpu gets hotter so maybe that one's uh the one that needs to be replaced anyways let's go ahead and disconnect the fan connector same thing same thing excuse me just wiggle the connector like this and eventually it pops out there's some tape holding it down oops sorry i got too much stuff to the side there's some tape holding it down so we're just going to peel that up I'm going to use the plastic tool and peel it up from this side first because this side's shorter. Okay, so just peel the adhesive up and out of the way. All right, just like that. And then you can get this out of there. There we go. And now let's just lift the fan out. See, as you can see, it's stuck here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of twist this. All right, just like that to loosen it up. And there we go. Wow, they put way too much paste on here. You don't want this to happen at all, all right? So that's not good. Um, you definitely don't want that happening. Okay, so we're gonna now use the plastic tool again and scrape off all the excess. Yeah, you don't, you don't want paste going out into the motherboard, definitely, and you don't want it all over here. So that's way too much. The nice thing, though, with the CPU is um, the area around the die is all smooth, so it's easier to scrape this stuff up. Okay, I'm just going to scrape all this out. Oh, I'm getting the paste everywhere. Okay, so we're just going to scrape this up. You want to be careful because this stuff gets, it's hard to clean off if it gets on other things like your clothes or your hands. Okay, so we're just going to try and scrape this up. Get that out. 
All right, so we got most of that up. We're gonna clean it later with the paper towel. We're gonna clean off this as well. Wow, that's a lot. I should probably actually be doing this over my trash can so it doesn't end up going all over my desk. But uh, to kind of show you guys. Okay. This is what thermal paste looks like when people don't know what they're doing. So, I don't know. This is how, I think this is how the company actually does it. They just put like, I don't know how they measure how much to put, but they always end up putting way too much. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. Just get a paper towel. Try and wipe off as much as we can here first. All right. Okay. So the whole point of the thermal paste is to fill the um, imperfections in the metal here and here and then make it get as good of a contact from those spots. If you get the thermal paste all the way out here, basically the heat is going from there and then it's going out into the outside of the chip and you don't want that. You just want it to go straight to the heat sink to get the heat out. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this up as well with the paper towel and then we're going to use the rubbing alcohol to clean it better. So this one doesn't have a direct contact with the copper. It actually has this little shim on top. I'm not sure what material that is, um, but that's how they design it for this one. All right, so now we're gonna get some thermal, I mean some isopropyl alcohol, sorry, on the paper towel again. And let's go ahead and wipe this stuff off. Just clean this up. Okay, that's cleaned up. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Probably going to use another paper with more isopropyl alcohol, but here you can see, clean that off. It's a lot cleaner now. I'm going to get another paper towel and we'll just clean it a bit more. Okay, I'm not sure if this is aluminum or what, um, but they, us they usually use a material that is very good at conducting heat. All right, so anyways, now let's go ahead and apply the thermal paste to the dye here, but let's pull off any residual dust. Let me see if any paste got over the other side. Oh, okay, it looks okay. All right, so let's go ahead now and put the thermal paste. So it only goes on this part. You don't put thermal paste on this. Um, and here you can see they don't even have a way for it to connect. They made a hole there so it doesn't purposely doesn't reach. All right, so this we're going to put somewhat like a grain of rice. So because the die is not a square, it's a rectangle. So we're just going to kind of go across this way. Again, you don't need a crazy amount. Okay. So that's probably already too much again. All right, so what you're gonna do now is you kinda wanna spread this out to be like a grain of rice. That way when you press it, it's mostly gonna spread out evenly across the entire thing, okay? All right. So I know it's hard to see. I'll see if I can give you a better view once I finish forming this grain of rice kind of thing. Okay, we got more on this side, so we're gonna move it over. Okay. And again, when you put the thing on top, it's gonna completely smash it out and spread it out like a giant oval. So you don't need to worry about it. All right, so here you go. Let's see if I can show you a close-up better. Okay, so it's just like that. All right, so let's go ahead and reattach the fan. Oops, sorry about that. Let's zoom out. Getting too many messages and calls and stuff. 
All right, so we got that. Now we got the screw one, two, three, four. So we're gonna do the same thing like before. Just get it all lined up. Oops, I need to lift that tape back up. Okay, lift this tape up and out of the way. Okay, so we're gonna get this lined up. Make sure all the screw mounts are, screw holes are lined up. Slowly drop that into place. Okay, so again, you just gotta get all the screws back in. So I got screw number one, twisting it backwards to hear the click. One, two. All right, number two, one, two. Number three, one, two. And number four, one, two. All right, again, you wanna try and make sure these are all lined up if you can. All right, now let's go ahead and one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Double check these are all lined up. It's kind of moving around a little bit, all right? One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Then you can go ahead and tighten them down more. Okay. So don't move around. All right. Now I'm going to get my finger underneath again and then just make sure these screws are completely tightened in. Last one. Okay, so now the screws are all tightened. Um, I kind of want to fix this one a little bit because it's a little uneven. The GP one. Anyways, let's reconnect this cable first for the fan Then pinch the two pieces together. There we go. And then you can go ahead and tape that back down. All right. Don't forget the little sticker that goes on top again. All right. Again, I'm going to take this one back out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the screws just a tiny bit. You don't want to loosen it too much because you don't want to pull this back away or it will form air bubbles. Okay. So I'm just loosening it enough to where I can readjust the alignment. Okay, this one is floating, so I need to keep my hand underneath. Okay, so I'm going to realign this. Okay, make sure it's centered. There we go. And then let's go ahead and redo the screws. Now it's not so important, the order, because it's already flattened down properly. But we're going to do crisscross anyways. And hold this one again. Okay. All right, screws are in. Okay, everything looks good. Let's put the little plastic thing back on top. And then let's go ahead and reassemble the computer. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move everything else out of the way. I'm going to switch back to the PH1 or JAS1 screwdriver. Let's zoom out. Okay. We'll now get the laptop back here. Okay. And just like before when we took it out, now we have to put it back at the angle like that so that this headphone jack can go in properly. All right. You want to make sure all these cables are out of the way. Okay, so make sure lift them all up. Make sure they end up on top of the motherboard, not underneath. Okay, so there's three cables at the top edge here. Okay, I'm going to get this in. Again, we're going in slightly at an angle. All right, make sure all these cables get back on top as you slowly lower it down. Okay, so we're going to just get underneath and pull these cables out. Just like that while we're slowly lowering it down okay just like this so these cables seem to be taped on to the board so there we go slowly lower it down make sure that headphone jack stays in place okay oops this cable is more difficult to keep held up this cable make sure it's out of the way as well all right there we go. 
Okay, so now we got everything lined up. Now we just gotta reconnect everything. So let's go ahead and actually put the screws back first. Okay, everything here looks good. Make sure it's all lined up. Okay, so let's go ahead and put back the screws. We got one here. Okay, let's one here. All right, other one here. <clears throat> one up here. One down here. All right, and the last motherboard screw right here. Okay, now let's go ahead and reconnect everything. Um, if you did want to remove the screen, you um, open up the computer um, completely, and then you can take these two screws out, and then after that you can lift the screen and the hinge out of there. I didn't do that because if I do this, um, usually for the hinge screws, you want to put some thread locker or Loctite to hold the screws in place. Um, but yeah, um, it's a pretty simple thing to do, but customer just wanted me to fix the heat issue so i didn't take out the screen anyways let's go ahead and zoom in let's go ahead and reconnect the lcd lvds connector make sure this tab is flipped up okay get that connector into place pull that in okay make sure it's in all the way and then slide your finger over the latch to lock it back down and then you can go ahead and push down the adhesive you want to work your way from down here up so that there's no weird um, tension in it Okay, let's go ahead now and work our way over to this cable here. So same thing, make sure the latch is up. Get the connector in there. Okay, make sure the connector is in all the way. And then while you're holding it in place, slide your finger over the latch and that will hold, lock it back in. I think the white line is supposed to stick out like that. Let me take it out and double check. Okay, let's go ahead and put it back in. Yeah, so that little white line actually just sticks out like that. Okay, slide that latch down. Same thing, work your way up from there and then over to prevent any slack or um, uh, what do you call? You don't want it to be pulling on itself. All right, so flip up these latches as well. Make sure those latches are up. And let's go ahead and reconnect these cables as well. So just get them in, push it into place, flip that latch down. Right, same thing, pull it back, get into place, push it in, flip that latch back down, same thing, pull it back, right, get it into place, push it in, flip that latch down, right, make sure it goes in, yep, okay, and then we got the keyboard connector here, same thing, make sure the latch is up. Pull it back. This one's a little trickier because there's a lot less slack. Try and get that up into place. All right, you have to kind of pull the blue tab up slightly. And there we go. Slide your finger over, there we go. All right, speaker connector, same thing. They actually put a dot here so you know which side's up, but uh, the red one will go to the right where the wireless card is, and then the white one will go towards the center. So if you flipped it over, keep that in mind, all right. Get that connector back in and then push that back in like that. There we go. <clears throat> All right, next we're gonna put back the wireless card here. Okay, wireless card goes in like this, slightly at an angle. Okay, push it in and drop it down. All right, now we're just gonna tighten this screw back into place. Wireless antennas, we're gonna connect last because they go on top of the battery. So let's go ahead now and put back the battery. Let's zoom out here. Okay, so the battery, you just drop it into place. But uh, first we're gonna plug this back in. Okay, you wanna be careful now because we are putting power back into the board. Um, if you're replacing the battery, make sure that the red is going towards the center of the laptop and the black is going towards the outside. Okay, you don't want to flip it over or you can destroy your entire motherboard. Okay, get the connector in, make sure it's flush lined up, 
and then you can go ahead and push the entire thing back in there we go now we just slide the battery back into place make sure the screw mounts line up okay there we go um, the bottoms here have little nubs that stick up that make it easier so keep that in mind all right now let's go ahead and put back these screws Okay, just the four screws here. Almost done. I don't think the customer gave me the charger. So there's no BIOS battery in here. Oh wait, there was, it was on the other side. So hopefully it will just power up just fine. In some rare cases, when you completely disassemble a computer like this, um, it, won't, um, it won't turn on unless you plug it in. Hopefully that won't be the case with this one because there's a BIOS battery that's on the other side of the motherboard, so hopefully it will know. All right, again, we're gonna reconnect these wireless antennas. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, so for the wireless antennas, when you reconnect them, you want to get it, all right, lined up properly. You'll know it's lined up because if you try and move it around, it stays in place. Once you get it, then go ahead and push it down, all right? Then same thing with the other one. Again, the black one goes to the black one and the one with this little tape on it goes to the white one. All right, get that lined up. I have a customer here, so I need to respond to them. Click it down. All right, and then these wires, they just went right between the fans. So we're gonna do the same thing. Just line it up there, stick that on, same thing. Okay. Stick that on and there we go. All right, let me respond to my customer. Oops, I didn't zoom out. So um, basically I just stuck these tape things back down. All right, let me respond to my customer real quick and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. All right, so let's go ahead and finish putting this thing back together. Let's zoom out again. All right, basically we just have to put back on the cover now. Okay, so just get everything lined up and then we're gonna just snap it back together. All right, just like this. If you want, you can actually put the back side in first just so it goes over the vents, okay? Let's see here, can we do that? All right, and then we're gonna click this all together just like that. Okay, looks good. We're gonna work our way down and hopefully this side will, okay, yeah, it does click back in. All right. And you want to make sure that all lines up. Okay, looks good. Everything's lined up. And then just put back the screws. All right, and that's pretty much all there is to this. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, again, please like, subscribe, and share my channel with others. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, again, these are customer computer repairs. I don't buy these uh, computers to make these videos. Um, maybe if I become like super rich from making all these videos, then I can start buying computers just for the purpose of taking them completely apart to show what's inside. But as of now, um, it's all customer computers. All right, so other than that, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. You're welcome to stay as I put back the remaining screws. Um, we're just going to power it back up afterwards to make sure everything is working. And yeah. All right, last four screws. Okay. Last one. Let's power this thing on. Oh. Oh. Is that always there? I don't recall that black plastic thing always being there, but I guess it was. All right, let's power it up. Oh, let's clean that off. That's kind of gross. Go. All right nice and new all right let's power this up 
Oh, I think I do need to plug it in. Oh, shoot. Okay, I guess I have to get the plug from them to power it back on. But anyways, um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this spite. Well, just in case you were wondering, I plugged it in, and yes, it turns on now. So we should be good to go. Everything boots up, and the computer's working. These LEDs are kind of hard to see with the bright lights I have. But um, here you go, and yep.